How's it going, folks? Today, we are getting ready to take a look at creating our model number one. We went through the process of learning on shape, learning the tools, learning how to create three-dimensional models, learning how to create drawings, and now we're going to take all of that and put it into practice. So most of you are going to be completing this individually. Some of you will choose to follow along to the screen recording. Um, otherwise, I have a drawing available to you to use as a reference. So let's get started. We're going to go ahead and initially go in, create a new document, and that document is going to be called model number one. Go ahead and hit OK. We'll wait for this, uh, this work surface to, to load up. And once again, we are presented by our few different planes of view, top, right, and front. And we can see that on the left side as well here. This is where you have to make the decision, how are you gonna choose to build your model? And I will promise that this way can be, this model can be built in a few different ways, as most of them can. I'll show you one way, it's up to you whether or not you choose to use this method. We are going to start on our top face. We're gonna start a sketch on our top face. So I'll go ahead and I will start this sketch on the top face or the top plane. And you can see my sketch one plane is now visible and I see sketch one over here. To get ourselves started, I'm gonna right click and hit view normal to sketch plane. That'll flip everything around for me. So the first shape that I'm gonna place in here is a basic square, uh, or I'm sorry, a basic rectangle. Now, I am not going to use a corner-to-corner -corner rectangle. You guys know I like to use that origin point, so I'm going to use a center point rectangle to kind of start us off. And if we're looking at the drawing, we'll notice that this rectangle is uh, 2 inches by 1.5 inches, and we can see that through the dimensions placed on it. And uh, there we go. So we have this nice rectangle there. I'm going to go ahead and zoom to fit so you can get a better view of it. Now, the next step is up to you. You can certainly extrude this up the way that it is. However, I like to get through and do most of the work on the physical sketch as opposed to the model. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fill it these two front corners, this corner here and this corner here. And for that, we will use our sketch fillet as opposed to our 3D fillet. And we will simply click and click. It will form that 0.25 radius. We'll hit enter, and then we'll confirm that we want it to be 0.25. And we're going to do that same process over here on this edge. So there we're left with our nice two rounded corners at a radius of one quarter of an inch or 0.25. The only other step I want to do on this initial sketch is if you look at your model, the isometric view, there's a hole about right here. So I can extrude this up and add the hole later if I want, but to make my life a little bit easier, I'm going to try to place that hole right now. So if we look at our model and we do a little bit of investigating, the first thing we'll notice is that the hole is, uh, is at one inch in from this left edge. Our dimension tells us that. And so I just went and drew a one inch line in from that edge that also happens to be at my center point. Now the next thing you'll notice is looking at our side view that it is 0.5 or half of an inch in from that edge. So what I can do is I can go ahead and click and I will enter in 0.5. The last step we're going to do to place this circle, again, these lines are just reference lines that can be deleted later, kind of like construction lines. The last step we're going to do is physically draw this circle. And if we look at our front view, we notice that our circle has a diameter of half of an inch or 0.5. So I'll go ahead, place that at 0.5. And uh, the last step before finishing the sketch, I'm just going to delete these extra lines that I drew because they're not needed anymore. We'll go ahead and we'll hit our green check mark. This is what you should be left with. If I hit my green check mark, it will finish that sketch and then I can right click and hit isometric. So I'm looking at it all nice. We're going to go ahead and turn this two-dimensional sketch into a three-dimensional model using the extrude tool. So if I grab this extrude tool, I'm going to click on, I could either click on the circle or the outer shape, and I will click on this outer shape. And once again, referencing our, our drawing or our example drawing, we notice that this bottom or this base has a height 
of half of an inch or 0.5. Once you've adjusted that, you can hit your green check mark and there is sketch number one. That is your base. And again, that base is at that half of an inch. It's two inches by uh, one and a half. We have this half inch circle with quarter inch radiuses or fillets. So our next step is to begin creating this upright feature here. And in order to do that, I'm gonna start a sketch on, uh, on this top. Ooh. I'm gonna start a sketch on this top plane here. So I can either hit the top and hit sketch. I can just right click and hit new sketch, whatever you wanna do. But you should see a sketch two plane on that kind of top face now. So I'll right click and I'll hit view normal to sketch plane as I normally do. And, uh, and I'll be able to kind of look at it from this nice perspective. Now, in order to create this, uh, this back piece here, I want to be taking a look at, uh, at my drawing again and trying to figure out the size of this back piece. So we'll notice there's a few uh, fillets on either side, on this side and this side. So we wanna exclude those from our initial, uh, our initial thing here. We'll notice from our front view that from this left edge, we have a distance of 0.5. So we'll go ahead and do a 0.5 inch reference line, that guy right there. You'll also, from doing a little bit of further investigating, figure out that uh, it is also half of an inch on that side. And since we have, uh, I'm sorry, also half of an inch from this side. And since this is two inches wide, a half inch, half inch, that leaves one inch for the center. And then a little further investigating from that drawing finds that we have a half inch distance for this piece here, a half inch going out. So I'll use my corner rectangle and I will create a one inch by 0.5 inch or half inch box. And this is what I'm going to use for my next extrusion. Once again, if I choose to, I can delete that, uh, that erroneous line, that the redundant line, I guess, and uh, and we can finish our sketch. So green check mark, sketch is finished, hit isometric, it will flip it around for us. Our next step is extruding this smaller box, this rectangle we just created uh, up. So we'll click our extrude button, we'll click our rectangle, and to find out how tall to extrude it, you have to do a couple simple, uh, just a little bit of simple subtraction. Our overall height is 2.75 and our base height is 0.5, so if we just subtract that 0.5, we are left with 2.25 for our overall height, and we'll hit our green check mark. I'll do a right click, zoom to fit, and you can see the top portion of our model here. We have a couple more extrusions to do. Before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and fillet uh, a couple features here. So you'll notice we have a fillet here, we have a fillet over on this side here, and then we also have this rounded top. So in order to get all those features, I'm simply gonna use my fillet tool, my 3D fillet tool, and I'll adjust this radius to 0.5 or one half of an inch. So when I adjust this to one half of an inch, I'm then able to click here, and that creates this very nice fillet leading directly to the corner. I'll be able to click here, if I slightly spin my model, I'll be able to do the exact same thing on the other side, and we'll create this really nice curved feature here. So you'll have four edges to click on. Once you click on them, hit your green check mark, and you're left with this. It's really starting to shape up, but we have a couple more things to do. The first thing we're gonna do is we will right click, and we will start a new sketch, or left click, and start a new sketch on this front, face, this front face right here. View normal to sketch plane. And you'll notice that uh, we have a circle that kind of extrudes out from this top portion here. So in order to do that, we're simply gonna go ahead with a center point circle. And I should be able to find the center point of the circle. You see that nice uh, orange box or square is showing us that. So if I click right when I get that orange box, I should be able to drag this out and once again, use this reference point uh, or constraint, a tangent constraint, or I can simply click and type one and that will do the exact same thing there for me. This is the only thing we're gonna do in this sketch. 
So go ahead and create that circle. Make sure it's perfectly, perfectly aligned. And we will finish our sketch. We'll hit an isometric and we will extrude this circle out. So when I go ahead to the extrude button, I'll click on the circle. And then I want to, again, take a look at my drawing and do some simple subtraction. I know that I already have a half inch thickness back here and I know that my overall size is one, so we need to adjust it to a half of an inch. Once I hit my green check mark, you can see these two parts are molded together, and I have one last thing to do. I will right click, I will hit new sketch, I am going to view normal to sketch plane, and again, we're starting this new sketch on this front face right there, that front face right there. View normal sketch plane, and I can do this a few different ways, but I'm just going to choose to use a point. And if I just grab a point tool and go straight to the center of that, you'll see once again, we get that uh, orange square. I'll click. That's all I'm doing is placing that point. Once I place that point, I can finish my sketch. I can hit isometric and I can do my very last thing to this model here. That is the hole, the hole. So if you go up here, it's a new tool that you haven't used the whole tool. So if I click the whole tool, the first thing I want to do is reference a point. This is my reference point. Next thing I want to do is adjust the, uh, the diameter of it. And in this case, my diameter, if you reference from the front view of the drawing, is at a half of an inch. So this is already set correctly. The other thing you want to do is adjust your distance. So right now I have a distance of through all, meaning it is going through the entire object, which is just fine. That works perfectly. You can also set a specific distance if you'd like. You know, if I wanted to uh, extrude 0.5, it is right now. Or if I want to extrude it from 0.5, you know, I can do that too. But we can just keep it at through because that gets the job done. Half inch diameter, make sure it goes all the way through. Go ahead and hit your green check mark and your model is completely finished. If your model does not look like this, then there is an issue. Please go back and try to fix it. Your last step, your last step here is we are gonna go ahead and we are going to change the appearance of this by selecting whatever color you so please. Once again, I will pick this middle purple color, so do not select that as yours. Once this is completely done, we are going to do uh, we are going to save it just like we saved the practice model. We will go up to these three lines, the document menu. We will go to print. You'll get a nice little box. You'll see my model is not perfectly inside the box. So I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. I'm going to uh, control and right click and uh, move it perfectly where I want it. And then I can download this image. And once this image is downloaded, it is available for me to upload to Schoology. In our next video, we'll take a look at how to take this model and create a technical drawing based off of that. But until then, stay creative.